and welcome. We are going to be talking about electric potential energy today, so maybe you are a physics student who needs to learn something about this. And at the outset, I want to say that this is a really important topic, primarily because it's a stepping stone to other super crucial ideas, and it does logically and conceptually connect with a lot of things you've learned about previously in your physics education. So if you've talked about potential energy in your class, there are different forms of potential energy. The most common one is gravitational potential energy. You can also talk about elastic potential energy. Today we're going to be talking about electric potential energy. So you can make connections with that, mental connections with that, as well as be able to do conservation of energy problems with electric potential energy. And we're going to take that concept and work with it as we go into something that is super crucial in the study of electricity and magnetism. But before we get there, we need to talk about electric potential energy. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this all works. I do also want to say at the outset that all of modern society really depends on these concepts in electricity and magnetism in an important way. So understanding how batteries work, understanding how motors work, how generators work, all of these things are crucial for modern society and you benefit from this tremendously. So if you've ever wondered how your cell phone can get charged or how much energy is in there or the inner workings of a motor, something like that, these things that you continually benefit from and maybe not even think about, this basic understanding is going to help us to begin to understand a lot of those concepts. So let's go ahead and get to it. First of all, I do want you to think about your training, your physics training with gravitational potential energy. You probably have had something like this before. You may have seen it as potential energy due to gravity or U sub G is equal to MGH. And this we're assuming is on the Earth. And on the Earth, we have a gravitational constant here, mass here, and the height here. So the higher something is, the more potential energy it has. The more mass it has, the greater potential energy it has as well, gravitational potential energy. One key difference between this and electric potential energy is that this potential energy we have stored based on the position of these charges here, let's say, is based on their charges, not their masses. So if you take a look at this up here, we're dealing with the mass, and the mass of the Earth is implied in this equation right here. Over here, we've got these charges that we're looking at, and that's what drives this potential energy. It also helps if you've ever played with magnets and felt them repel from each other. It takes work, literally physics form of work, to put them close together. But once they're close together in the orientation where they repel each other, then they have stored energy based on position. You could say that they have something like electric potential energy based on where they're at. Now, we're, we're using magnets. It's not exactly the same as talking about electric charges, but the analogy does work. One scenario that I do want you to think about is imagine that we have a setup kind of like this in the upper right. So imagine we have two parallel plates. One is positively charged, one is negatively charged. You may think that this is an odd situation, and at first it may be, but actually this is a really important scenario. As we get more into the physics of electricity and magnetism, this is the basis for a lot that's going on with capacitors, and batteries work very similarly as well. If you think about it, you would have an electric field. In fact, this would be what's called a uniform electric field. These are electric field lines. They would be traveling from the positive side over to the negative side. This one should be connected over here. I will also point out that not all of the electric field lines are drawn like on the outside here or the outside of the screen over here. Just imagine that there is a charge right here. It's going to move from this position over here to the final position over here. And while it's moving, think about it, would it be gaining or losing potential energy? The answer would be is that it would be losing potential energy as it moved from its initial point right here down to its final point right here. This is exactly like thinking about an object that you're holding up in your hand. Imagine you're holding an object in your hands, somewhat above your shoulder level, let's say, and you're about to drop it. You drop it, as it drops towards the floor, it's going to be losing potential energy and it falls some height value, that's just like this distance value over here, and it loses potential energy as it falls. That's kind of like what we're showing right here with this scenario. So if you understand more or less what's happening here, then we can continue and say for a uniform electric field, notice the electric field is going to be the same entirely throughout this area right here. So for a uniform electric field, we do have this equation right here, 
we have minus QED. This Q stands for the charge amount that we're dealing with on this point charge right here. E stands for the electric field. D is going to stand for the distance through which that charge moves right here. This equation is only valid in a uniform electric field. One thing I will say about this D value is that we're interested in this D value in this plane right here. If there's some component that moves in this plane right here, we're really not interested in that motion. We're just interested in like this. Okay, and one thing I do want to point out, this negative sign also means that the potential energy will increase if the charge is negative and decrease if the charge is positive. We're assuming this D value is in the same direction as the electric field lines right here. So by default, everything in an electrical unit that we're dealing with in physics is based on the assumption you're dealing with positive charges, including electric field lines. And electric field lines extend out from a place where they would begin. And they show the direction that a small positive test charge would experience a force. And so that would be from left to right for this scenario. And that would be a positive D value. So let's take a look at a problem. It says a charge of two microcoulombs moves through a uniform electric field of 300 newtons per coulomb, a distance of four centimeters. What is the loss or gain of electric potential energy for this charge particle? And what would this be like in terms of the gravitational potential energy analogy? All right. So essentially all we're going to be doing is just plugging in values into this equation. It's actually pretty straightforward and it's all given to us. The only thing I will remind you of is this microcoulomb business over here. This mu prefix means times 10 to the negative 6. And the other thing I do want to point out is remember to always convert this into meters. If you're given something in some other value other than meters, it needs to be converted into meters to get the problem correct. If you don't do that, you'll get the problem wrong. And you plug in your numbers, you end up with this value. Check it out. It's a negative value. So the question you could have is, why is it negative? If you think about it, and this will help us to answer B as well, this will be like if you had an object that dropped. Again, like if you're holding an object above your shoulder height and you're going to drop it, it's going to lose potential energy in the process. By the way, where does that energy go? It goes into kinetic energy, and that's going to be the same here. We we have electrical potential energy right here that gets converted into kinetic energy as the charge particle speeds from one charge plate over to the next charge plate. All right, in part C and D for the problem, I want you to think about, well, if you're going to move in the opposite direction, notice this is going to be an I value here, this is going to be an F value here, what would happen? In other words, for part C, what is the loss or gain of electric potential energy for this charge particle? I want you to do your best to solve that right now. And the answer is, it's essentially going to be the same problem, except we're going to have a negative value for this distance value, because by default, we're assuming that this object's going to be moving in the same direction as the electric field itself. If it moves in the opposite direction, then we need to make that a negative number. And if we do this, we turn out with a value of 2.4 times 10 to the 5 joules. And what would this be like in terms of a gravitational potential energy analogy? The answer is, it would be like lifting something up. Instead of letting something drop and just fall down, it would be like picking up a brick and picking it up, up over shoulder height. And the question is, have you added potential energy to that system or taken potential energy system away from that? And the answer is, you've added potential energy to the brick itself, if you're focused on the brick. And so this concludes the first part of this. I think I'm going to break this up into two parts and quickly go through the electric potential energy if you're dealing with point charges and how to tackle those types of problems. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thank you for listening. I've done screencast on all of the major topics up to this in terms of our electricity unit. Please stick around for part two.